We are online. Hello, everybody. Hello, scientific community. And I'm Eugenia Galazzo-Diapko, and today we have amazing and uh, just very famous person from Poland, Agata deszkowska golets And uh, today we are going to talk pure science about biogenetics and stay tuned for next 15 minutes. It's going to be very fast, very uh, concentrated information. And uh, as you know, I'm a pres representing Interdisciplinary Research Foundation. We are organizing conferences worldwide. We are publishing. We are doing these broadcasts from different countries, from scientists as and scholars. And very soon we will start some new projects. And uh, I will tell more about this in the end. And now the stage is for our uh, wonderful and passionate scientist, biogenetic. Agata, the stage is yours. So tell us about projects you're working now. Thank you very much, Eugenia, for invitation. And I'm really happy to be with you here and hope that you hear something interesting for you. For sure. So, yeah, so let's start with some uh, slides. Oh, you prepared well. some visuals for us, right? Yes, yeah, so I have some cool. slides. So. Even if I don't understand anything in genetics from the <laughs> except of school program, uh, I, I hope I will be able to educate. Uh, yeah, uh, you will for sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I will start with a little introduction to show you where I came from. So I'm from Katowice, it's on south of Poland, and here is University of Silesia located. So. At the university, we have eight faculties, and uh, the one that I'm working in is Faculty of Natural Sciences. Exactly, yeah. I'm working in Institute of Biology and Biotechnology and Environmental Protection, and here you see great people that I have opportunity to work with. Uh, oh, it's uh, exactly two teams of plant genetists at our yeah. institute. Yep. So, if I can uh, tell you shortly what I'm really involved, it's all about genes, honestly. So uh, when we think about modern biotechnology, modern genetists, uh, we are overwhelmed by the sequence information. We have a lot of data from sequencing and comparing to the amount of data, we know almost nothing about gene function. And uh, when we want to define the gene function. We have to remember that genes are interacting with each other, not in an easy way. It's a really complex interaction network. So when we want to answer some question, we should address some questions like how do genes interact with each other? The next one is how do genes function? And this is the most important one when we want to distinguish genes very well. This looks amazing, like social network. Of genes. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that. It's always um, a very good comparison when you compare the gene networks to, for example, for metro uh, network. It's like that. It's really complicated. It's really complex. And the most important question in modern biology, biotechnology and science is why? And we want to ask why such particular gene is acting in some particular pathways. So when we want to define the gene function, it's like arranging puzzles and finding the missing one. So we are like a kids that playing uh, something that we call science. And wow. uh, finding a missing puzzle is a real important question, but I came from the biological background. I am most biologist, and I always like to play with a whole picture, not only gene sequence, but also physiology, morphology, and the most important environment, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. plants interact with environment. And the environment is not really easy for plants right now. Mm -hmm. We all uh, know that the drought threat is real and global and plants cannot escape, they can't move as we can. So <laughs> they answer to drought has to be really fast, efficient, and that's why also very complex. So here you see some pictures uh, from July 2017 and 2018, it's Denmark, and you see how the drought is increasing in that particular region, but mm -hmm. it's 
in whole world like that. That's why we want to obtain as much knowledge as we can in the field of drought mm -hmm. stress response in plants. And I, we... Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask some questions like uh, yes. during the slides, for example, uh, the previous two, two yeah. slides back about the topics you are interested before this? Yeah, like uh, the morphology, the uh the previous yeah this mm -hmm. one like the yes big picture yeah yeah and uh, this is like i'm sure not only me have this question like uh, about bioethics because yeah. like you know this uh hot topic about uh, gene modification and uh, research in this area uh how how you deal with ethics here and uh, what is the limits of, of the research a very good question, Eugenia. It's uh, not easy. Also, it's not easy to answer because when we consider the um, possibilities that we have right now, there it seems that there is no limits. Uh, we can modify a sequence and then analyze its uh, impact on um, on the response. For example, for plants, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we have also remember the impact on the environment. That's yeah. why uh, I put it here also as a four point of my interest. It's uh, really important to have a whole picture, a whole picture, not only in research, but uh, in uh, in a most mo most uh, wide perspective. Right. So, yeah, the ethics is not um, easy for scientists to follow, really, because uh, we have this gene modification organism, for example, gene modified organism. We have uh, a new technology which is called genome editing, the CRISPR-Cas technology. It's really complicated, and, and I can, uh, for example, hello. tell mm. hello, yeah? yeah, and I can tell uh, about this uh, much more in our, let's say, next meeting. Meeting, for example, but uh, in our case, uh, we are taking advantage from chemical mutagenesis, mm -hmm. and it's not really harmful for the environment because, for example, when you are eating spaghetti, you have to remember that the spaghetti is derived from the wheat, yeah. which was treated by chemical mutagens to obtain triticum durum, which is the cultivar that we use for a years to produce spaghetti. Wow. So it's not really harmful. Yeah, this is the scientific, um, really uh, curious things, but it's like that. We, we are using mutagenesis for a hundred of years. So uh, yeah, so it's not really harmful. And we have uh, a population of, uh, tilling population of barley. It's almost 10,000 of M2 uh, individuals. It's a plant of barley that are mutagenized by some chemicals. Mm -hmm. And in this population, we are searching for mutants, which are tools in functional genomics that we are using for defining the gene uh, function. And then we can use these mutants also in uh, breeding programs. Aha, so, this is about your yeah. project uh, Barista, right? Yes, so, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So this is uh, this is how we play with this. So it's... Uh, mm -hmm. to your project yes, Barista, of because mm -hmm. we have okay. like uh, around yeah, 8 minutes like, left. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is very mm -hmm. interesting and I know that you are working hard uh, now at, at this project to make this, uh, to breed this barley, which is like more more strong in uh, our changing uh, environment and changing climate, right? Yes, exactly. So in the face of climate changes, we have to uh, really intense, uh, put intense emphasis on uh, research um, that are focused on understanding, first understanding uh, mm -hmm. response of plants to drought and uh, to find proper genes that we can then use for control this response in uh, not very good, so let's say drought uh, stress environment. So in Barista, we are trying to use barley as an object for our research, but also as a model for other crops. And this is important point that we could also um, emphasize here and underline. So that the project is international. Here you can see a map 
Uh, there are eight European countries involved, and we are really uh, interested in uh, results that we will obtain. And uh, we hope that we could uh, establish some important traits of barley in not uh, not favor environment, which is for sure drought stress. So in our case, this is uh, people who are involved in Polish uh, team research. There are great lab mates and we are working together on these mutants that we uh, developed much earlier in some previous projects. And now we are using them for understanding drought response in barley and mm -hmm. also we are collaborate with our breeders in poland but also in spain in uh, italy and uh, in germany or great britain in scotland exactly and this estonia my, my question about how yeah. about this situation of lockdown mm -hmm. uh, are you able to keep uh, your work uh, active uh, like between countries what, what barriers actually mm -hmm. you have or uh, yeah, this have is, stopped with your research or no? Yeah, this is the most uh, hard uh, thing right now for us, the, the hardest task to work together because we are all locked down. So, so uh, we can communicate using internet, uh, mm -hmm. using Skype and so on, and uh, some electronic tools to mm -hmm. communicate, but we cannot travel. I see. Uh, can you uh, visit your lab at this moment? Yes, I can. I can visit my lab, but we have to be really uh, cautious about that. We have to um, work, um, let's say, on shifts, uh, not to meet uh, very frequently. And uh, we put all our research just on a shelf for a while uh, so we didn't uh, start new experiments but of course we have some that are in progress and we have to uh, we have to uh, really work with them so uh, we are trying not to stop with science because it's uh, it would be a nightmare in the future if we stop right now I so, see. so you have kind of deadlines right uh, yeah exactly 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 oh. but uh, what is positive in such situation is uh, that we uh, finally have time to finish some tasks that we were not able to finish when we are were all the time in the lab for example now we have time to finish our papers to finish our project applications and so on so it's all, all also like that you have to look at bright side of life yes Absolutely. so in this hard situation we have also to find some light and uh, for sure there is something like that and and uh, i can say that uh, uh, writing papers right now is a good <laughs> time to... It's to wonderful that. that you yeah. gave some positive vibes uh, for us in this sphere. And what about like your recommendations which you use for online work? What mm -hmm. helped uh, well, What helped to you personally? What, what you can uh, maybe add to, to the popular uh, ways of working mm -hmm. yeah so uh so the lockdown is not easy for uh any of us i think and we have to remember that we uh very frequently it uh it's related also to whole families so as we are working remotely uh we have to very we have to be very well organized much better than in normal uh, uh, conditions. Yeah. So uh, I've also prepared a slide like that. It's it will be easier for me to uh, to um, tell yeah, about this. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I think we don't have a lot of time to to read. Yeah, about. it's just so yeah, it's just, just this leave one. it open. Yeah. And on, so my last question is, uh, yeah. tell please, about this intriguing project about space. Yeah, global. Uh, okay. Space challenge you mm -hmm. you took part and it's very intriguing and uh, I'm sure we, everybody is curious what is uh, up ab about uh, bringing your research in, in uh, stratosphere okay yeah it was real fun and uh, we have a great leader in that it was Joanna Foresh and uh, she's uh, really passionate about space and uh, she was able to uh, collect really great people in that so we uh, we take opportunity to uh, send our uh, for example plants and microorganism uh, in the stratosphere 
So oh. we, uh, yeah, the, the aim was to check what uh, is the impact of the stratosphere, so near space environment, on the uh, life. Wow, so, so in yeah. future we can grow something in space, right? Yeah, in the future maybe. So it was just a preliminary experiment and we had a lot of fun with that. It was adventure for us and we were lucky to win a prize for the educational... Um, uh, for the educational... Uh, it's great. Yeah. Yes, yes. Amazing. I'm sure your students uh, just in love with everything what you do and uh, I hope. <laughs> send me some links uh, of your project so uh, our uh, community can can go deeper in, in your research and uh, we need to finish today and I just uh, want to in intrigue uh, uh, our viewers our fans of this show that we are going to to start two more broadcasts. One of them is Women in Science. And I hope uh, Agatha will agree to join us also there. And the second one is like discovering the local science. And uh, thanks to this new initiative, we will, be, we will have more time for, uh, for one country. Because starting now with uh, a lot of speakers, I have some questions like, OK, why can't we have more speakers from one country? we will have in uh, in next broadcast. And of, of course, I'm waiting for you, Arga uh, you, Agata, there with more details about your research. And thank you so much for today, for uh, discovering a little bit for us this topic of biogenetics. And for sure, I'm going to, to look more uh, in, in your links and to, to read more deep, to prepare to our next show. So thank you so much. and. Uh, Today, we are also going to publish some materials from a socially responsible uh, university who is very active uh, in this time of um, pandemia and uh, helping with their uh, um, activities with the volunteers from the university. And I'm sure that Agata also will be curious to, to check uh, from a university except of uh, University of Silesia because I know how it looks like a spaceship and I've been uh, in in uh, University of Silesia, and I personally have a lot of friends and a lot of uh, positive emotions. And today we will publish some news from Krakow Polytechnica, uh, we, uh, who are actually very active in helping hospitals and creating chemicals and uh, giving a lot of equipment in this time of uh, epidemic. So stay tuned next Friday, we have a next speaker from Italy. And um, well, I will not going to tell you the topic, but just a little intrigue. It's going to be very interesting for all women in science also. And uh, I wish you a nice May, happy 1st of May. And Agatha, thank you again for being today with us and sharing your great experience and positive vibes. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you Thank very much. It was very Thank nice you. to speak to you. Goodbye. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye. Thank you very much.